This is the Logitech G602. This is my G602. I bought it nearly seven years ago, shortly after it was released in 2013, and it's still on sale today in 2021, which I think in itself says a lot about this particular mouse. And mine is still going strong. Well, mostly. And to be honest, it's looking a little rough, but that's not the point. The point is, a couple years ago, the middle mouse button started to show signs of aging. It still worked, but it became unreliable, only working some of the time, having to press the button multiple times, or having to use an increasing amount of pressure, which I was fine living with until just a couple months ago when it stopped working entirely. At which point I decided it was time to retire the old girl and begin my search for a new mouse. But it occurred to me, the mouse still works in all other regards. I'm happy with it. Do I really need to replace it? And obviously the answer is no, you saw the title of this video. So I went ahead with some research on how to fix the darn thing. And it turns out most middle mouse buttons work the same way. At least with my research, there's only a few different buttons that work in generally the same way. They may use a different mechanical process to press the button, but in the end, a button on the logic board gets pressed. Specifically in the case of the G602, there was a very common Omron B3F-1000 in the middle of the board, which is activated when pressed by a plastic rod that descends from a flexible plastic carriage, which houses the mouse wheel. In the case of my mouse, mechanically it's fine because even pressing the button directly yields no results. So let's fix this thing. What you're going to need is some soldering equipment that includes a soldering iron, solder sucker, solder wire, screwdriver, optional helping hands to hold the logic board. Not absolutely necessary, but I recommend it. You can find cheap soldering sets on Amazon that will do the trick and are actually cheaper than buying a new mouse. Oh, and of course, you'll need a replacement button. I bought mine from DigiKey and they are very, very cheap. First thing is first, take apart the mouse. I recommend finding a specific teardown for whichever model you have and follow it closely. Start by removing the batteries if you have a wireless mouse. For the G602, I had to remove the pads on the bottom to get access to the screws holding the top half to the bottom half. I then carefully separated the halves, revealing a truly disgusting sight. I am very sorry. I promise I eventually cleaned it. Remove that ribbon cable from the main board, which will give us a better look. Here we see the left and right mouse buttons and the middle mouse button. Replacing the left and right click is basically the same process as the middle mouse button, but I believe there's three connections instead of four. Now we need to get the logic board separated from the body. I thought I could do this without removing the battery carriage, but clearly, that didn't work out, so once that was removed, the logic board was free. Now we get to the soldering. For the record, I am not a professional. My experience is limited to modding Xbox 360 controllers with macro buttons when I was in high school, so I suggest checking out some pro advice on proper soldering technique. So with that out of the way, what you need to do is remove the solder on the four contact pins of the button. Heat each pin individually and use the solder sucker to remove the liquid solder. You may have to repeat this step a few times to get the button free. Once the majority of the solder is gone, you should be able to get the button free with minimal force. Push that new button into the now vacant spot, making sure to replace it in the same orientation as the old button. Heat the pins and solder them in place on the board and that's pretty much it. Definitely test this out first before you put it back together. You don't wanna to have to have this thing reassembled and then have to find out that it doesn't work and you have to take the whole thing apart again. So make sure it works before you actually reassemble it. But anyways, go ahead and reassemble it once you know it's working. I would recommend some decent screwdriver here, preferably something with a magnetic tip. God damn it. Yeah, I had a hard time with those uh, tiny screws. But alas, the mouse was back to its former self, even though when I first tested it, nothing actually happened. But that was just because I'm a dummy and I was clicking on where the middle mouse wasn't supposed to do anything. So when I went to YouTube to open some new tabs, it was working and I was quite relieved because I actually thought I broke this thing for a moment. This repair job was an effort, but to be honest, 
It was an education and it built my confidence in my ability to tinker with electronics. And to be honest, it's, it's cheaper too. To replace this mouse, I would have had to shell out $115 compared to whatever cents the button cost and the $50 I spent on the soldering gear, which I have for future repairs now. And even there, I could have saved money. Right now on Amazon, you can get soldering kits for $11, super cheap, and they have pretty good reviews. And aside from saving money, you'll also be helping with reducing the growth of the world's e-waste piles. 53.6 million metric tons of e-waste was produced in 2019 alone, with the upward trend showing no signs of slowing. Not something I want to personally add to. So I challenge you, the next time you have a malfunctioning electronic, try not to think about what you can buy to replace it, but how you can fix it. Because if I can do it, you can do it too. Learn something new, save some money, and perhaps most importantly, save from adding just a little bit more to the world's e-waste.